welcome to this Red Alert 3 3v3 on Magmageddon. And as the purple Soviets, we have Mexican, and then we have Eminence as the green empire. And as the blue Soviets, we do have Wahabo. That's one team, and then the other team starts with the orange allies, red pawn. Waff the Wolf as the Red Allies, and as the Cyan Empire, we do have Proflaw, which I do know most of these players, at least their names, not necessarily personally, I don't think I know any of them personally, but I do know most of these players' names, except for Red Pawn, who is a little bit new, so I'm curious to see what we'll be seeing, and so far, everyone looks like going for some scouts, looking to see what everyone is, what everyone is doing, and if we do have, I <laughs> can't remember the names, but Profloff going for the Oil Derrick, as is very usual, especially on a map with Oil Derricks, but I'm kind of thinking that these players might have played random, which, you know, always a good thing to scout out, but it does look like we have Bears, we have Engineers out of Mexican, and Mexican also thrown down the Crusher Crane and the Super Reactor, that's always good. And everyone's throwing down beacons all over the place, but always throwing down that early super reactor, and then he's going to be moving his MCV. The Mexican may be looking to skier in expansion, and then throw down that war factory and pump out some hammer tanks or some twin twin blades. And we do have ooh a light engagement. There was able to get three of those uh, peacekeepers dazed, so Wahabo able to do you know a little bit of distraction, not a whole lot of real damage. And as you can see, these players are grabbing their oil derricks and then expanding so that they can take their nearby third oil, or third ore nodes, not oil, but ore nodes. And actually pushing in with dogs, Waff the Wolf is actually, oh, and he's bringing us peacekeepers, two more, six peacekeepers total. These can do quite a bit of damage, especially once they all start get going, all get going. But with that wall there, should be able to block them off and a conscript getting taken out by Red Pawn. So, just early infantry out of these players, nothing too surprising there, as some of these early infantry can be so, so effective. I remember uh, one game, it was on Mac again, 3v3, that's all anyone ever did was just early infantry. The team that did that ended up winning. So, oh, and the massacre with the bears. Well, I guess it didn't really quite turn into a massacre. There we go, now it's being massacred. But those bears were able to clean up basically everything that Waffle Wolf had. And actually a couple of uh, peacekeepers there are kind of getting, well, not kind of, getting eliminated because possibly of not paying attention or also a bad rally point. But it looks like we do have expansions going down for everyone but Profilo. And as for the third base on the other side, we do have everyone taking their third bases except for Wahabo. He's taking this one down here, which of course then he can easily secure that, but it does look like he's going for more of a naval play, just now dropping down that uh, super reactor. We do have the barracks over here from Mexican, and getting out some terror drones, always a good choice. Have yet to see any twin blades, well, a airfield, or any hammer tanks, so he's not really making any use of this uh, super reactor quite yet. Bullfrogs out of him, and you know, keeping his Imperial Warriors around, Profiloff is, and oh, no, we do have a little bit of a dog doing some attacking, and actually, wow, Red Pawn actually took a ridiculous amount of damage to his war, war refinery, but Vertigo's out of Red Pawn, he's got this airfield over here making strikes on those Stingrays, going to be able to clean them up, no problem, he actually lost one of his ore refineries, which is never good to have happen. And just now, Eminence setting up his fourth base, so he's taking a kind of early fourth, especially in team play, it can be hard to secure expansion. But, man, Wahabo just pushing in here. Wahabo, some people criticize the, you know, kind of cheap plays that he does sometimes, but that's okay. He's playing pretty strong right now, but getting pushed from. He's got everything walled off, so he'll probably be able to deal with this, but he is getting pushed by those peacekeepers. Setting up another wall segment doesn't have quite enough money to finish that up, but we do have Vertigo's coming in here, going to be making bombing runs, taking out the wall, rebuilds it basically immediately. He's paying attention down there, which always is good. And we do have a slight engagement. Tsunami tank getting locked down, but these tank busters will be able to do no damage as they are turning around. 
and the twin blade out of Wahabo going to be able to clean up those peacekeepers. Absolutely no problem. Eminence going to be pushing out with some units to assist Mexican. And all the while, Propoloff going to be pulling back to his third base, making sure that that's secure. Wap the Wolf getting his own air force. What else does he got going on? Not a whole lot in the back of his base. He is up to his fourth base, which means he's going to have a fair amount of income dropping down that barracks. And then Red Pawn did lose this second ore refinery, so he's had to rebuild two, and... Oh, the bug! Slight little bug there with that Harvester. Maybe he will see it now and be like, Hey, Harvester, you get back to work. Those Harvesters do sometimes get stuck. It does look like he's going to be moving it. It was those walls. And up here we do have Tsunami Tanks versus Infantry, and both on Air for support. Eminence does have some Striker VX. He's going to be able to do a little bit of damage can't get too close to that multi-gunner turret are going to be able to take down these tsunami tanks if they do not move position. They need to get under cover of that multi-gunner turret or jet tangles will also work very well. Could switch one of these oh no the overall will be able to clean up that jet tank is no problem. They can switch them at the last second which makes them susceptible to tank busters and also that tsunami tank, hammer tank, tsunami tank taking each other out and that terror drone did not get a chance to do any real damage. That one was able to lock down this Tengu over here, and it did get taken out himself, and we do have a Tesla reactor going. So, I wouldn't say a Tesla rush, but Wahabu making a little bit of a push with his Tesla reactor. Tesla reactor? Tesla coil, and doing quite a bit of damage, able to take down a couple of Apollos, and going to be doing some damage to the airbase, or to the Vindicators, with his... with his twin blade, and it looks like Wap the Wolf is going to be pushing up, he's got some Guardian tanks, he's got some Peacekeepers, won't be able to do too much damage, was almost able to take down that Defender VX, so much going on, this looks like Red Pawn is, is going to clear out Wahabo, at least Wahabo, at least a little bit, cancelling that Tesla coil, not able to do any more of that silly Tesla coil pushing, that is only on three bases, but dropping down a Battle Lab as he has had that airfield for quite a while, Sending out an infantry scout. And <laughs> looks like Mexican dropping out a couple of base defenses, preparing for any sort of counterattack that may be coming and expanding onto the water. Propoloff has already done that. Very good choice. As the Empire, you can of course get those expansions up quite early, putting him on four bases, which means that Wahabo is the only top base person. Or right side person, top base person who hasn't taken a fourth base, and now Red Pawn is not in too good of shape as he only has one working harvester, the other ones, well one is taken down and then he lost, or sold off the other refinery as he just couldn't manage to keep it around, we do have cryocopters leading the engagement, but not a whole lot of damage done, a little bit of damage, one tsunami tank does go down, looks like Wonk the Wolf isn't going to be pushing in there, not going to be committing, but this, the battle lab finishes at half health, never a good thing to have, and the bullfrog coming in for support, and it does look like, oh, the Defender VX isn't going to be doing anything in this fight, that was wasted money, was able to delay this army and cause the army to take damage, but the tank busters getting nullified by that bear, from the front of the bear, the roaring bear, and now it does look like Mexican is going to be able to push in here, these few base defense is not going to be what is needed to stop him, he's going to be able to push in here with the hammer tanks, could switch them, switch them to the leech beam, but we do have a couple from Propolov, a couple of striker VXs, could switch, switch them to the le leech beam if he wanted to regain some of that health, and they do do less damage, but a MiG going to be supporting, and it's going to be able to do a fair amount of damage in conjunction with this black trooper to these, uh, to these uh, striker VXs, that's what they're called, and now the hammer up the one that landed, and Womp the Wolf stepping in to do some damage. No, he's going to turn around. No, he's going to maybe just hold position, find out what's going on. It does look like they are going to be attacking that ground, and the King Oni getting locked down, going to be getting possibly magnetic mind to death. No, he just died from so the King Oni. Very smart move, back in his hammer tanks out of the range of that King Oni, and Womp the Wolf going for that classic cryocopter vindicator combo the micro to be able to maximize the damage and the Apollos are here for support going to be able to take down oh no it does get sold off it was able to at least force the sell off which means no more mining although that that harvester was already dead Wahabo what has he been up to looks like he got some base defense to put off on him anyways 
So his Tesla coil push didn't quite work out like he had wanted, but he is on three base, which is better than what uh, Red Pawn is on, which is only two. And he has now got both of his ore harvesters back up and running, collecting that ore for him, able to get him some money so he can build some units to stay in this game. And that Guardian tank is the luckiest thing. Needs to get maybe an IFB or maybe just some repair drones to repair up these Guardian tanks. An IFB with an engineer, of course, would be very excellent in this situation. Mobile repairs were never a bad thing, but oh! Kirovs, we're up to tier 3, making good use of that battle lab, which never got eliminated, but Dreadnought, Kirovs, going to be able to eliminate Red Pawn, most likely. He does not have a whole lot to counter this. He is going to be running his MCB. Maybe if he can set up on the water, he can take this game back, do some damage. Maybe he should just sell off his base tons, just kind of sack them, get what cash he can while he can. And Walk the Wolf, going to be kind of at a stalemate with eminence, but, you know, it's a good way to build to break a stalemate. Well, I was going to say an athletic cannon, but it's not working out too well. We do have King Odys engaging over there, but this is the main battle down here, and the Tsunami Tank going to be running all over the place. The Tsunami Tank's not doing a whole lot of damage with those nano attack, the adaptive armor that the Tsunami Tank have, and it does look like Propolop going to be not in this battle, but Walk the Wolf, on the other hand, is in battle and it's going to be pulling back as Eminence does as well. I think if Eminence would have committed, he might have been able to do a little bit more damage, but he would have had to deal with these base defenses and Mirage tanks as well. So who would have won that engagement? It's hard to say exactly, but it does look like Red Pawn is just about out of it. He has escaped with his MCB at full health. He does still have an oil derrick, but oil derricks do not provide you with very much money. But Walk the Wolf may lose his third and then may lose the rest of his, I guess, main, but his main is really over here. He may lose his other expansions, well, his other ore nodes, and he has taken a fifth ore node. So the first player to do that, and it does look like Mexican, has a fair sized army, but, you know, nothing too huge, nothing too extreme. A little bit of harassment from Eminence may be able to take out this or, or Harvester as. Walk the Wolf is, you know, kind of busy over here dealing with other stuff, distracted, he's gonna follow up to take down Mig, but the Kiron is what you gotta watch out for, and now we do have jet tanks from Croplom going to be able to not do anything, they're going to turn around and not deal with this Mecha Tango, as they just cannot fit in there too many. Might even be better to just switch him to jet mode, maybe leave one of them down there and try and take out this Kiron before it eliminates half of Waffle Wolf's economy. He, well, you know, it already has eliminated one fifth. Now we'll get the other half if possible. Looks like they are going to, yes, turn around and attack that hero. Probably the only real choice will be this one refinery. And there it goes. The last bomb does fall, but just as the Kirov does get that. Uh, does get that heroic status, which means it gets passed on to that jet tangu. So, and we do have a Eureka. Eureka is out, and Eureka very, very good at dealing with aircraft, especially those expensive Kirovs. So good. Oh, but the tractor beam from what was that? From the, tra the tractor beam from the apocalypse tank. Boy, you have to kill that at the cannon. So quickly, the apocalypse tank may be able to just run over some of these other tanks. The one Mirage tank getting trapped and just getting taken out, but the V4 taking out another one. Walk the Wolf has been seriously taking some serious damage, I guess would be a better way to put it. And a new a complete miss from that, <laughs> from the V4, but losing the rest of his tanks to Eminence base defenses and Tsunami tanks. So Walk the Wolf not in the best condition, especially after losing, no, all three of his refineries back here, which means he's now on two base and technically Red Pawn is in this game, but he's not in the best of shape, so Team Right Side is looking to be in decent shape. Wahabo has not re-expanded to anywhere as of yet. Well, he's not expanded to anywhere in addition to the three expansions that he already has. Might be trying to take another one after he gets done building that super reactor, which does give him two, so he's probably planning on throwing down some base defenses, maybe for his allies, finishing up that war factory for his allies. We have Jet Tangus from Robloff going to be able to do some early damage to this Kira, which of course the Kiros do have so much HP and 
always difficult to take down if Bullfrog's going to be chasing away those Jet Tangus and doing quite a bit of damage. Not able to get any of them, so those three Jet Tangus will escape, will live to fight another day, and this Vertigo, this Vertigo, Threadnought will get taken out by those Vertigos. Never a good situation. And the satellites are going to be coming down. What grade? Only the tier one of that satellite drop. All three of those little satellites do miss, and he was not able to use the magnetic satellite to pick, to pick anything up. So nothing special going on for Red Pawn as far as those satellites go. But now we do have a couple of Apocalypse, and, or not Kir Apocalypse back here, but Kirov tanks leading, or Kirov airships leading the charge. Never a good thing to really just throw away a Kirov like this and not actually support it. You need big up here. We do have V4 rockets following it up, and this Kirov is going to land on nothing. He does. Mexican was able to remove, was able to move his units out of there, and his V4 from Wahabo doing a little bit of damage to that army. And Waff the Wolf, how is he doing down here? Not in the best of shape, as most of his army got cleaned out. Eureka Omega not going to be doing anything right yet. Could you turn to you know, take out a couple of these quick legs while they're fighting this with the rest of his army? And this King Oni not able to do a whole lot of damage, was will able to will be able to do a little bit of damage before getting locked down. And just now, Eureka Omega going to be coming in, possibly taking out anything, nothing. He was trying to use her special ability, Psionic Wave, but it did not work. Should have just tried to get the Twin Blades, but such a hard call to make. Might have not even been able to get that, but <laughs> Eminence and, and uh, Wahaba are going to be moving out together a Joint Strike Force, and not even the Athena Cannon will be able to save them with the Athena Shield. And even with the cryo shot, wasn't able to get anything at all. Wasn't able to bust through the repair, through the drones on that apocalypse tank. But King Oni's getting into the mix as well from Eminence. And this apocalypse tank able to run over one of Walk the Wolf's few remaining. Oh, and the split from not a good enough. That cryo shot will be basically useless. Running over one of the Walk the Wolf's. Mirage tanks, and now looks like Eminence and Wahabo are going to be able to clean up at least a couple of these buildings. Maybe a couple of these production structures were able to take out that harvester, which means only one base for, no, two base for off the wolf. But it does look like the rest of the main base may get cleaned up. And with the Apocalypse tank, oh, off the wolf has left the game. Apocalypse tank logged onto that MPD, it is not going to be able to escape. So now we just have Red on and Rob Lump, which Rob did get control of all of Lump the Wolf's stuff. Which means Red Pawn is still just on those two bases. Was able to get a second one up and running, but Eminence is just going to be rolling over this base with a little help from Wahabo. As some of Wahabo's other units did get taken out. And these teams are not necessarily what you want to be killing, but Eminence and Wahabo do look to be in good shape. And Wahabo and Mexican going to be in pretty good shape up here, able to take out that expansion and the foil there. And now it is just Red Pawn, which Red Pawn now has, you know, like six ore nodes. So now he is officially back in this game. And, you know, he was kind of, he took most of the damage early on, but it does look like Mexican is going to be the last one in this game. And, oh, the King Oni, not able to do a whole lot of damage with that charge, with that bullet charge. But the rest of the army was able to take down that MCB. And it does look like with the right side team, Wahabo, Eminence, and Mexican going to be cleaning up these bases. This is over just as I switch views. And now we're stuck looking at this water. But Red Pawn has been defeated. So good job to Mexican, Eminence, and Wahabo. Team right side, Soviets, Empire were able to win out the day. Sorry, allies, you just didn't do too well in this game. Although... Maybe we could see another game like this. Another crazy 3v3 game. Not something you see very common, even less common, to see high up players like this. Eminence, Mexican, Wahabo, Propolop, Wap the Wolf, and Red Pawn. Very good players, all of them, especially in the 1v1s. But, an interesting game, kind of a low key game for me. But, wow, yeah, Red Pawn not doing too good on those resources. Everyone else was mostly neck and neck. And Wahabo kind of dropped off, but he was doing quite a bit of damage, so it's okay. And Eminence actually able to come out ahead with those mass expansions as being Empire. It is pretty easy to do that, but this about does it 
So, this is Cybert signing out.